What do you think? There is this tension in physics between theory and experiment. Mm -hmm. What do you think is a more powerful way of discovering truly novel ideas about reality? Well, you need both, top down and bottom up. Um, yeah, it's, just a, it's, it's a really interaction between all these things. So over time, the observations and the theory and the modeling should go, both get, get closer to reality. But initially, and it is, I mean, uh, this is um, this is always the case. You know, they're, they're always far apart to begin with. Um, but you need one to figure out where, where to push the other. You know, so um, if your model is predicting anomalies um, that are not picked up by experiment, that tells experimenters where to look. You know, um, to 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 find more data to refine the models. Um, you know, so it, it it goes it goes back and forth. Um, Within mathematics itself, there's, there's also a theory and experimental component. It's just that until very recently, theory has dominated almost completely. Like 99% of mathematics is theoretical mathematics. And there's a very tiny amount of experimental mathematics. Um, I mean, people do do it. You know, like if they want to study prime numbers or whatever, they can just generate large data sets. And with a com so once we had the computers, um, we began to do it a little bit. Um, although even before, well, like Gauss, for example, he discovered, he conjectured the most basic theorem in, in number theory, which is called the prime number theorem, which predicts how many primes that are up to a million, up to a trillion. It's not an obvious question. And basically what he did was that he computed, uh, I mean, mostly used, uh, um, by himself, but also hired human computers, um, people who, whose professional job it was to do arithmetic, um, to compute the first 100,000 primes or something and made tables and made a prediction. Um, and that was an early example of experimental mathematics. Um, but until very recently, it was not. Um, yeah, I mean, theoretical mathematics was just much more successful. I mean, because doing complicated mathematical computations is uh, was just not not feasible uh, until very recently. Uh, and even nowadays, you know, even though we have powerful computers, only some mathematical things can be um, explored numerically. There's something called the combinatorial explosion. If you want us to study, for example, Zermatt's theorem, you want to study all possible subsets of the numbers one to a thousand. There's only one thousand numbers. How bad could it be? It turns out the number of different subsets of one, of one to a thousand is two to the power one thousand, which is way bigger than, than than any computer can currently can can enumerate. In fact, any computer ever or ever can um, enumerate. Um, so you have, you have to. Be, um, there are certain math problems that very quickly become just in, intractable to attack by direct brute force computation. Uh, chess is another um, a famous example. You know, the number of chess positions uh, we can't get a computer to fully explore. But now we have AI. Um, um, we have tools to explore this space, not with 100% guarantees of success, but with experiment. You know, so like um, we can empirically solve chess now. Uh, for example, uh, we have we have a, a very very good AIs that, that can you know, they don't explore every single position in, in the game tree, but they have found some very good approximation. Um, and people are using actually these chess engines to, uh, to make uh, to do experimental chess. Um, that uh, they're, they're revisiting old chess theories about oh you know when you this type of opening you know it, it, this is a good this is a good type of move this is not, and they can use these chess engines to actually uh, refine, uh, and in some cases overturn. Um, um, conventional wisdom about chess and I, I do hope that uh, that mathematics will will have a larger experimental component in the future perhaps powered by ai we'll of course th talk about that but in the case of chess and there's a similar thing in mathematics that i don't believe it's providing a kind of formal explanation of the different positions no. it's just saying which position is better or not that you can intuit as a human being and then from that we humans can construct Yes. A theory of the right. matter. 